In this session, I'm going to show you how to format your map or how to visually format it. In other words, how to make it look the way you want it to. So you may have noticed in our map that we're using this weekly planner map, it's got lovely rainbow colours and it all looks great. I know you're very jealous of my design skills, but unfortunately I can't take credit. It actually comes with iThought so it can do it automatically. So in order to do that, let's just take you through the different ways in which you can format your map. So we click on the central topic here just so it knows that we've selected something. And then you come up to this artist's palette here. If I open this up, you'll see it gives you numerous options. The first is relating to your map layout and the structure. So here, if I click on this drop-down menu, it gives me the option to create, for example, a top-down map where all my topics, as you'll see, are organized downwards like so. I'm just going to return it to what it was, which is a horizontal map. But you've got a few options there. You also have the option to adjust the spacing of your topics from the central topic, basically. So if I say none, you'll notice that all the topics here basically end up in a straight line. So now that I've moved it, you might be able to see it a bit better. If I now say very convex, for example, they'll almost form a nice little circle within those. Equally, I could say very concave, and they go that way around. So hopefully that's clear what that does. Uh, you also have the option to align your map automatically, partially, or manually. So if you say full, it means that iThoughts will basically keep everything nicely aligned for you. So as you move things around, it will slot into a nice sort of ordered, even structure. So that if you're a little bit OCD like me, it keeps everything looking nice and tidy. If, however, you wanted a bit more free reign, you could say auto-align partial. Now what this does, it means that you can move your main topics around freely, so you'll see that I can now move that wherever I like, but everything below it still stays nice and ordered. So if I try and move that around, it'll jump back into place, but my main topics are movable. The next step here in the next step on this is that you can say manual. If I click done, it means that every element, every subtopic is completely movable as I like it. So that is your alignment options. We'll just put it back to full just because it's nice and satisfying and it keeps things tidy. You can also adjust the type of the uh, style of the lines within your map. So you'll see here it says kinked, which refer and level one, by the way, refers to these first lines out of your central topic to your main topic. At the moment, they are set to kinked. So it's basically a straight line with a little curve there. I could say, let's make that an S bend. And you'll see that they all change to an S shape equally on level two, as you'd expect. If I just move the map a bit so you can see, if I go for level two style, I could say reverse taper. Actually, let's go with right angle. That sounds kind of fun. And there you'll see it creates right angled lines. Very, very straightforward. You can also adjust your line thickness. So I can make all the lines very big and bold if I wanted to add a bit more uh, color, a bit more uh, impact. Next, you can adjust the color of your map. Now, here is where it gets nice and simple, and it can make, allow you to create very striking-looking maps without very much effort. So here, map style. You'll see at the moment we have selected wireframe color. Now, what this means is that the lines will inherit some color. The lines will have some color automatically added. But the actual subtopics or the topics will be white background or clear background to make your text kind of clear. So if you say full color, this is the default main, the default option that I thought gives you. You'll see that color is all over the place. So there's color fills, there's color lines. Personally, I like this wireframe option. Alternatively, you can say wireframe color and text, which will color your text and the lines the same color. Or if you wanted to keep things really simple, you can just say wireframe monochrome, which will make everything black and white. Now, if you go back to wireframe color, you'll see here we have this little checkbox saying rainbow colors. If I unselect that, everything goes back to the same color. This is the default setting that iThoughts gives you when you open a new map. So before I started this course, or before I started this lecture, I just selected rainbow colors, and it automatically adds a little splash of color. You can then adjust, if you like, to sort of change how the colors disperse and move and what the different gradients are and so on and so forth. So plenty of things to play with there. If we move into our general formatting options, You'll see it gives you the option to format the callout shape. So if I just add a little callout onto one of the topics, so we'll click this button up here. So this is my callout. If I now move, oh, excuse me, if I now move this so you can see what it's doing, and I go to general callout shape, let's make it a square bracket. And you'll notice that it then changes the callout to this square bracket, or I might say oval, and it makes it an oval. Finally, levels. Now this basically allows you to tailor make or customize the different shapes within each level. So at the moment you'll see we have level zero is here, the central topic where my mouse is hovering. Monday would be level one, 
and this would be level 2. So if I say level 1, I want to be a square or a rectangle, and it'll basically change everything beyond le level 1. If I ha say, however, that I want level 2 to be something different, I take it off auto, which basically means it'll inherit whatever is above it, and I could say oval. It means that everything in level 2 will now become oval shaped. So you can keep going to your heart's content right up to level 9. Personally, this level of detail, I'd say don't get distracted with it because you don't want it to take away from the actual content of your map. But if you want to be that specific and make it exactly how you like, you do have that option. So next we'll look at the options that you have regarding colour again. You have more things that you can play with. So if I just select this PM box and open this little spectrum circle here, if I click on that, you'll see it gives me a whole raft of colours I can choose between pa pastel, saturated colours. If I hit, for example, this red colour here, it'll change that branch red. Equally, I can select to do's, open up my colours again, and let's make that a bright green, and there it goes. If you want to change all of this back, you simply hit the auto button here, and it'll go back. Oh, I have to select the right topic first, that would probably help. But you hit auto, and it'll go back to what is already suggested, or what is already uh, the inherited style of the map. So I hit auto again, and it'll basically go back to what everything else is doing. Finally, you have the option to edit text as well. So you'll see I've selected PM here, and if I just hit this A here, the font symbol, it opens up this little window, it allows me to adjust the font, so I can scroll through, through some of these, get some interesting options. I can adjust the size, the uh, the boldness, or the if certain fonts have it, whether or not it's um, italicized. I can never remember if that's the right word. I can also adjust the size. So hopefully, you've now just got a very quick run through of all the different ways that you can edit your map. So either using this artist palette, and the associated menus here to do with structure and colors and sizes and shapes. Or you can come into this one here, the spectrum circle, to adjust the colors in your map. Or you can come into here to adjust the font. Hopefully now you have everything you need to make your maps beautiful.